that is cube, this time with advanced semi-crystalline material. Nozzle diameter 0.4, layer height 0.2, scale in order to make it more challenging 0.5. Judgment about the quality belongs to you. Fuse filament fabrication with advanced semi-crystalline polymerase such as PEAK or PEG is a challenging process. But when you have ability to find a balance between cooling to solidify the deposited material and heating to avoid overcooling, you can finally stop struggling and start enjoying the process. But what does the balance between cooling and heating mean? You should print advanced semicrystalline polymers in the same way as you are printing engineering or commodity semicrystalline materials, such as polypropylene or nylon. Just scale the temperature to appropriated region. Are you using cooling for those materials? I assume yes, and for good reason, because for advanced materials you need to do the same thing. If not, you cannot avoid the formation of the printed part when viscose, not solidified material, is pulled by the nozzle. As a result, you end up with a fully crystalline part, but it's not really useful as dimensions are not preserved. We can have opposite situation without heating, but as you know, this leads to the lamination. So to obtain fully amorphous part during the 3D printing process, you need both gentle cooling and heating from the bed and halogen heater. But you need to be below the glass transition temperature. Next, when you go above the glass transition temperature and increase the intensity of the halogen heater, you can have fully crystalline part during the 3D printing process, but you still need to enable cooling to ensure solidification of the material and maintain the desired shape of the part. OP printer gives you the ability to balance it. Cooling fans are connected to the PWN signal and you can adjust them to the length of the deposited layer to achieve solidification. Then you adjust the intensity of the halogen heater, increasing and decreasing it to be above and below the glass transition temperature. Because we don't have here enclosed chamber, heat exchange is rapid and you can play with the properties. Look on those spool holders amorphous. Fully crystalline. And one side crystalline and one side amorphous. You may ask why. When I recorded the 3D printing process for you, I had to open the door to do it. As a result, the heat dissipated from one side while from the opposite side, the heat was reflected onto the part. So the energy in that case can be absorbed by the part, reflected by the doors, emitted by the source, in that case halogen heater, or transmitted if you select proper materials. The OP printer and material selection to build it were optimized to ensure the efficiency of those processes. For this reason, to show you how the part is printed in situ, crystallized, I can only use diagonal position of the camera. Ok, let's make a small summary. To print a fully crystalline part, you print with a high intensity of the halogen heater to get the temperature above the glass transition temperature and ensure solidification of the layer by gentle cooling. An amorphous part will be achieved by reducing the intensity of the halogen heater or alternatively increasing the intensity of the cooling fan. Alternating by keeping the sample above and below the glass transition temperature, the best idea is to change the intensity of the halogen heater. 
As a result of this, you get the desired properties, flexibility or increased stiffness, a ductile part or a part with high elastic modulus. That is your decision now. Thanks to the new Dimension 3D.